Hey YouTuber, welcome to part three of our Exploring the Color Space tutorial. Today we're going to take the knowledge that we learned in part one and part two, and we are going to combine them so we can learn how to mix any color that you want. All right, so maybe it's just you want to find out the perfect color to match a peacock feather. Or maybe your goal is to find out how to blend an exact shade of skin tone within your picture. Or maybe even you're just looking to match the color of a random splotch of paint inside another picture. And we're going to be able to do all of those things and more. But we got to do a little bit more learning. I know knowledge, learning. Why am I learning all this stuff? Well, because I'm lazy and I'm cheap. All right, we're going to start out warming up with the easiest color we're going to have to match. Putting that in isolation window, we can see that color, color is actually pretty dull and fairly dark. The closest color I have in my palette at the moment is that thalo blue. The thalo blue is going to be obviously too bright and too light. I was able to just simply add a tiny bit of black to my mix and we'll see how that matched up. One try, I got that one. But, 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 Bill, Bill, wait, wait. My art teacher told me I should never mix black with my paints. You know, it's something like, you should learn how to mix your primary colors to make a nice and cool or warm black. Well, did it ever occur to you that your art teacher or art professor might be a freaking idiot? Okay, let's speak some truth. Black, white, neutral gray, they're all achromatic. There are blacks that are biased to one color or another, but if it's a neutral black, then that color is going to be devoid of any hue. Same thing with white, it is devoid of any hue. Same thing with neutral grays, they are considered achromatic. So... But it is something you have to be careful with. If you mix black with a color, it is going to very quickly desaturate and very quickly darken at the same time. All right, let's take a swing at this green on this uh, peacock feather. So I started out immediately by mixing my thalo green, which is the closest thing I had in shade, and I added a little bit of yellow to it. And then I dumped in some white um, to bring it the value up. And as you'll notice, this color is not usable as is. Um, it needs to be just a little bit darker and a little bit more desaturated. I'm going to get right back to showing you what I'm going to do to fix that color in just a moment. But I wanted to talk about another thing. My phthalo green, which falls somewhere in here on the color scale, was many things. It was, it was too vibrant, too dark, and it was also the wrong hue. So I needed to move away from the blue hue and bring that green over here, which the yellow did. At the same time, the yellow brightened and lightened the color. Adding the white desaturated it, brought the value perfectly in line. Now when I got done mixing that color, it was not quite correct. So what I did, and we'll look at how I did, is I added a tiny little bit of a red quinacridone rose down here which is pretty close to the opposite of the, of the color that we have. To bring that saturation down and darken it just a hair more, let's see how we did with that match. Color wheel. Remember how I talked about different colors being most vibrant at different values? Purple, violet, is the most vibrant at a very dark tone. As you move up the color wheel, the colors will get both lighter and usually brighter at the same time. If you want to brighten up an orange, a little drop of yellow is your ticket. Same thing with green. You want to brighten up green, yellow is your ticket. Yellow is the brightest 
at the highest value of any hue there is. You want to brighten up this blue? A little touch of green will make it both lighter and brighter. It's much easier to learn how to do this than it will be to create all of those charts that you're never going to need. As a matter of fact, all the color charts you have, you can throw them into a dumpster fire. All right, now I'm going to go through the process of creating the skin tone that you see on the forehead right there. As you can see, I have my isolation window cut out. Uh, that's more about that simultaneous contrast. We're going to talk about that again. Um, what I have here is a picture of my color wheel that I took and I altered the gamma on that in a computer program which made it lighter. So, and I marked the spot that roughly matches that skin tone. So, but I'm stuck working with colors that are natural to the color wheel that I have. So here's the color wheel that I painted out, as y'all know. And I marked with the magnet, you'll see, that one spot where I think that skin tone is going to land at a different value than the color wheel that I have. So just like before, this is the science behind it. My red and my yellow across the line are going to make orange. That orange is going to be extraordinarily way too vibrant. We add to go to the opposite color of where that lands, which draw a line from there. So we're in the right hue, but we need to desaturate that a whole lot. So we take our blue, which is the opposite color of where we landed that orange on our chart. Now we've mixed those and we've made a brown. It is way too dark. So I've got a pile of white in here. We're going to mix a little bit of that brown together into the white. All of your skin tones, well, all of your Caucasian skin tones are going to be very desaturated and very pale. All skin tones are going to be more desaturated than you think. The good news is I'm going to put that brown off to the side, and I'll probably be able to use that with slight modifications for my shadow tones later. So my color was off when I first did it, just a little bit. It needed to be a little bit darker, and it needed to be a little bit redder. So I added a little bit more of that brown to my white, and I'm going to add just a little bit more red to that tone and bring that hue around now we're getting closer and you can see the match we have that's going to be perfect i'll use that holy crap that's a lot of information to take in isn't it well it's a, it is pretty pretty lengthy but it's really not that bad. And I know that everybody's got short attention spans. I mean, I see the stats. I know people click off the last video halfway through it. And that's actually pretty good by YouTube standards. Think about that. Most people that come to watch a tutorial only watch half of it. Well, if you only watch half, you're only going to get half the results. All right, guys. We only have just a little bit more for you guys to learn about to become absolute color rock stars. So, stick with me just a little while longer. In 1873, there was this guy, his name is Mike Mikel Eugene Chevrel, and he developed the rule of simultaneous contrast and wrote about it in a book called The Principles of Color, Harmony, and Contrast. Heck, you got some 21st century artists out here. People are thinking they are responsible for simultaneous contrast teaching like they were really around here in 1873 right all right guys we're almost wrapped up before we do i'm going to introduce myself i am bill kennedy with w leon artistry if you liked the video today please 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 give me some thumbs up if you did not like the video you can always give me a thumbs down i got some haters out there i got a little bit of hate this last couple weeks they don't like that i'm bringing truth to you and that's all right you know, because all of us are standing on shoulders of giants from the past that brought us to where we are today. So if you haven't yet, you know, you need to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. I'm going to throw up some links for part one and part two. If you have not seen those, you're probably a little bit lost in part three, and those will really help tie everything back together. So we appreciate y'all stopping by. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to get into transparent and opaque colors and get into simultaneous contrast. And that's going to finish up all of the color tutorials. And I promise you guys stick with me for a couple more videos. You are going to be further along than you possibly imagined before you started. Hey, 
Once again, we appreciate you. Y'all have a great day. Bye.